What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Gage, and today I'm going to be going over the Warrior Hero deck profile. Uh, heroes have always been a favorite of mine, uh, of course, ever since the GX era, and Dark Law is just one of my favorite extra deck monsters of all time. Um, I mean, if you've ever played the hero, the hero deck before, you know exactly how powerful he can be, and I believe that I have cooked up some interesting spice to be able to get to Dark Law as soon as possible by utilizing the Hero Engine. And if you know how to be able to play all of your cards correctly, you can end on double Dark Law or even more. So let me go ahead and just jump right into the deck profile so that I can show you what I am talking about. So first and foremost, we have three Elemental Hero Stratos. So I am trying to get that third gold rare. Um, I do love the gold rarity. I think that it's fantastic from maximum gold. So very happy to be playing those in the deck. Uh, essentially the main starter, you are able to search a hero on normal or special summon. So he is pivotal towards being able to get some of your plays going. And for some other heroes, I have Elemental Hero Solid Soldier. I am running three copies of Elemental Hero Solid Soldier just because he is an incredible extender. If you're able to get two warriors onto the field, you have Isold. And Isold is going to be critical towards getting your plays going because Isold allows you to get into your the next card I'm going to be talking about. And that is Elemental Hero Shadow Mist. So... If you are able to get to Shadow Mist consistently, that means you're able to get to Dark Law consistently. And that's exactly what we want this build to do. You can either do it by Normal Summoning Solid Soldier and then Special Summoning Shadow Mist. But if you're able to go into Isold, I am playing a number of Equip Spells that you can send to the Grave to Special Summon them directly from the deck which is incredibly powerful because on Special Summon, he's able to search Mass Change, which gets you into your Dark Law. So I think that it is a very strong play, and uh, anytime you're able to get into Dark Law consistently, that is really good for me. And then I am also running two Elemental Hero Honest Neos to round out our Elemental Hero engine. Uh, essentially, you want to be able to search him off Isold's first effect, which allows you to add a Warrior, but it doesn't allow you to summon or activate its effects, but you're not going to be summoning him. You're not going to be activating his effects on turn one. He is going to be used to buff up your heroes in the event that they are attacked by 2,500 attack, and that's what you want to be using him for. So even though Isold restricts you from being able to summon him or activate his effects the turn it was added, it doesn't matter because all the time you're going to be adding him, and then using him the following turn anyway. So I think that it's incredibly powerful that you can search for him, and you have consistent access to Honest Neos. And then for the only Destiny heroes, I am running Malicious. I mean, he is just a powerful extender. It's a shame that he's no longer at three, but if you have one in the grave, you can banish it. Special Summon 1 from the deck. So that gets you a free monster on the field, which can help you get into Isold if needed, or just continue to extend your combos even further to get into some other heroes as well. I'm also playing the Vision Hero Engine, Vision Hero Ferris, as well as Vision Hero Increase. And these are also, again, very powerful extenders. So you're able to special summon Ferris from your hand by discarding another hero, and then you can put the Vision Hero Increase into your Spell and Trap card zone. Once he's in the Spell and Trap card zone, you can tribute your Ferris or another hero and special summon Increase, and then once Increase is special summoned, you can special summon Vion. And we all know how, how powerful Vion is uh, on summon. He could dump a... Destiny hero from the deck, uh, a hero from the deck to the graveyard, which most of the time you're going to be dumping your malicious so that you can get that free special summon. Uh, but you can also banish a warrior from the graveyard 
and a hero from the graveyard to add a polymerization from the deck to your hand. So the Vision Hero package, very, very powerful. I mean, you get free monsters onto the field, so can't complain about the free advantage. And then to round out our Warrior Extenders, we have three copies of Junk Forward and three copies of Fire Flint Lady. Um, again, your main goal is to be able to get into I Sold, and if you can do that, then you have Dark Law. Junk Forward, fantastic. It's a free special summon if you control no monsters. And Fire Flint Lady, if you aren't familiar, Fire Flint Lady is actually able to special summon if you control a warrior. But what's great about her is that you can send her from the field to the graveyard to special summon a level 4 or lower warrior from your hand. And if you do, that opponent cannot target it with card effects. So what's great about her is that she is, again, able to special summon Shadow Mist from uh, your hand, which is why I do run three copies, so that you could special summon it either off of Elemental Hero Solid Soldier or off of Fire Flint Lady. But it's better off Fire Flint Lady because if you send her to the grave and special summon Shadow Mist, now Shadow Mist can't be targeted by cards like Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring and by cards like uh, Effect Veiler, which... If they were to hit this card, you wouldn't be able to search. If you were, they were to hit Shadow Mist, you wouldn't be able to search your mass change, which means that essentially your turn, unless you have a lot of other extenders, your turn ends, and that's obviously not good. So Fire Flint Lady allows you to play around cards that might be able to target your cards and prevent them from being able to go off. So, yep, I love running the Hero Extend, uh, the Warrior Extenders, because it gets you into I Sold even quicker. And then I am running Dragoon in the extra deck, so I am playing the Red Eyes Black Dragon and the Dark Magician. Um, yeah, I mean, Dragoon, you're creating so much advantage with your cards that it's actually relatively easy to get into Dragoon. So I have them in there just in case I do need to be able to go into Dragoon because it's just such a powerful card. And now for the one ofs, I do have a hero lives. It's very powerful. You're able to get a free monster onto the field, so you can't complain about that. Reinforcement of the army to be able to search out your uh, a lot of different monsters. So you can obviously search out your Stratos, but you could use it to search for any of the warrior extenders if you already have access to Stratos. So reinforcement of the army is always going to be useful. I also mentioned Polymerization. Vision Hero Vion is able to search this out from the deck, so obviously playing one of it is just enough. And then, of course, for the last fusion, we have uh, Red Eyes Fusion for the Verte Anaconda play. So this allows you to get into Dragoon by sending the Dark Magician and Red Eyes Black Dragon from the deck to the graveyard, so very, very powerful. And then I'm also running, of course, the three mask change. This is the card that allows you to get into Dark Law, or if you already uh, are able to get access to a Dark Law, this can go into Enki, which allows you to go for some OTK plays, because if you use mask change to go into Enki and then you battle, uh, Enki is actually able to search a mask change from the deck, and since it's a quick play, you can... Use the you could use the mass change that you searched off of Anki to go into a Dark Law and swing for even more damage. So I love mass change. I love the fact that it's a quick play because it allows you to also go into Dark Law on your opponent's turn, uh, which is very powerful if you are using it on Shadow Mist. Because if you've already used Shadow Mist's effect to search for the mass change, then you can and you have Shadow Mist on the field when you pass turn. If you have this set. You can activate Mass Change, send the Shadow Mist to go and turn him into a Dark Law, and then because it's the next turn, you could use Shadow Mist's other effect to add a hero from the deck to your hand. So I love Mass Change. It is what allows you to go into Dark Law, which is what makes this deck so powerful. Then 3E Emergency Call. Uh, you really want to be able to get into your Stratos. It is one of your strongest normal summons. So 
Having consistent access to Stratos through e-emergency call is obviously really, really good. And then for our equip spells for the I Sold play, uh, obviously you can play whatever equip spells you please, but I found as though these were some powerful options. So if you want to go with these, that's perfectly okay. Uh, some of them, like Living Fossil, Different Dimension Reincarnation, and Overdone Burial can be used to as extenders. So they're not bad to have into the deck in the event that you do draw them. But of course, you really hope to not draw into any of these equip spells because you really need them in the deck in order to resolve Isold's effect. All right, so that is it for the main deck. Now for the extra deck. I am running not one, not two, but three. Mashed Hero, Dark Law. He's so powerful. Uh, the fact that you have the potential to be able to go into two of him on the first turn, depending on how many extenders you have, is really good. Um, any card that your opponent adds from the deck to your hand, you are able to then, once per turn, banish a random card from their hand. So this punishes people for searching. And of course, if there is... Uh, any card sent to the graveyard uh, from your opponent, it is banished instead, which is incredibly powerful, especially considering how much of the metagame is reliant on the graveyard in order to actually continue their plays. So Dark Law, still one of my favorite boss monsters. Can't go wrong. And then I did mention I am playing Dragoon in the extra deck, so... I'm playing Dragoon along with the Verte Anaconda. Essentially, if you do have two additional extenders, you can use those extenders to go into Predaplant Plant Verte Anaconda, send the Red Eyes Fusion to the graveyard, and then copies the Red Eyes Fusion's effect. Then that'll let you send the Dark Magician and Red Eyes to the grave to summon Dark Dragoon, which, uh, as you know, he's a negate. He can get incredibly high attack, and he can pop cards on your opponent's uh, side of the field. So, um... There's no reason not to run him in a deck that can make him relatively easy. And then I'm also running one extra hero, Dread Decimator. Um, he's really good because he is able to increase the attack of himself and any hero he's pointing to by 100 for every hero in the grave. Which, when you're going through a lot of your combos, you're going to have a ton of heroes in your graveyard. So... He can get pretty beefy, and more importantly, he's able to get your Dark Law pretty beefy as well, so that people can't just attack over him in order to deal with him. So Dread Decimator, very powerful, uh, only a Link 3, so it doesn't require too many materials to go into. And then I am playing... Apologize for that. I am playing two Isold, two Tales of the Noble Knight, so... Um, on summon, you're able to add a warrior from the deck to hand, so usually you're going to go for your elemental hero, Honest Neos. But then you can send equip spells from your deck to the graveyard to special summon a warrior from the deck with levels equal to the amount of equip spells that you sent. So if you send four equip spells, that gets you into your Stratos. Uh, that gets you into your Shadow Mist, which gets you into your Mass Change, which gets you into your Dark Law. So Isold is really what allows this deck to be even more consistent and I appreciate that. Um, you could also, if you already have access to Mass Change, you don't necessarily have to go into Shadow Mist. Uh, assuming you didn't draw into any of your equip spells, you can actually send five to Special Summon Vision Hero, uh, your Vision Hero Ferris from your deck, which allows you to continue to extend. Uh, and that is actually a very powerful play as well. We have the extra hero Cross Crusader. Most of the time we're not actually going into his effect because he does lock you into dark heroes. Uh, during the turn he activates that effect. You're usually using Cross Crusader to break out of the fact that uh, in order to link climb into cards like Dread Decimator, you need to be able to clear the Isold. So in order to clear the Isold, you can use him because he only requires two warrior monsters, whereas cards like Dread Decimator require heroes, and cards like Wonder Driver require heroes as well. 
Uh, Wonder Driver is great because it allows you to reset the mass change. So you can go into Wonder Driver, activate mass change, special summon a Dark Law, and then activate Wonder Driver's effect to set the mass change that you just used to get out your Dark Law back to your side of the field. So now that potentially gets you two Dark Laws uh, on your side of the field, and that's very powerful. And then a number of the One of Heroes, so I am playing Adoration for the Polymerization, Trinity for OTKs, uh, Destiny Hero Dystopia in the event that I do draw into my uh, two Malicious, and then the Masked Hero Anki for that OTK potential that I mentioned earlier with, sh uh, with the Mass Change and Dark Law play. And then I'm also playing Masked Hero Divine Wind, just in case I uh, my plays get stopped with the Stratos on the field. That way I can at least go into a powerful Masked Hero extra deck monster. And he is uh, the one that's Wind, so we're able to use uh, Stratos with the Mass Change to go into Divine Wind. So guys... Uh, hopefully you see what I was trying to go for here. This is actually a very powerful build, and again, anytime you're able to get into Dark Law consistently, that is really what's going to make or break whether or not you're actually going to win that game or not, because I feel like when I was playing the pure build, um, I wasn't able to get into the into Dark Law, and I didn't like that, because I, I didn't just like bricking, and this deck does not brick. I mean, you could do a ton of hands. Obviously, it's not ideal to draw into your equip spells, but even if you do, as long as you still have four of them in the deck, you could draw one of them, but as long as you have four, you can always get access to your Dark Law. So, thanks for watching, guys. I really hope that I was able to bring you uh, some different insight and a different take into the deck. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that it's budget. The Vision Hero package is pretty expensive, um, but it's in comparison to the main build where people are playing the evil heroes, uh, where those, those cards are going up, uh, those cards are worth hundreds. So uh, in comparison to that build, it's definitely cheaper, but it's still a little on the pricier side. So I wouldn't recommend this for budget players, but for fans of the hero strategy, if you're not looking to play the evil heroes, this, I feel, is a second alternative to go for. So, again, thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you're not already subscribed, and you have a great day.